Magicians always wonder, how can I get more photos and videos of me at events? Well, today I'm going to tell you exactly, exactly how I've done it over the last 10 years. Hey everyone, Stephen here and in today's video I'm going to show you 5 ways in which magicians can get photos and video of themselves performing at live events. So if that sounds interesting, just keep watching. So as a magician it's always important to make sure that you have a lot of video content and a lot of photos that you can share on social media and on your website. There's many reasons that you can do this. This is social proof so you can use it in your marketing. If you've got lots of video and photos from different events, it makes you look a lot busier. It lets your clients see exactly what they'll get. It will also allow you to track your career. So I've got, I can go through my album on my phone and go, oh that's when I was starting out. Oh, I remember that gig and it kind of is like a memory book. It's also lots of content for Instagram because we all know that you need to get content for the gram. So as you'll see it is really important that you have a lot of video and photos but a lot of people always ask how do you get more video and more photos of you performing in the real world. So I'm going to give you my five top tips for that so let's get into number one. Alright, coming in at number one, my top tip would be to ask professionals. So by ask professionals, I always mean ask the people that are paid to take photos and videos at the event. So they're being paid from the client, why not ask them for a copy? Okay, it's not as straightforward as that, so let me explain my process for doing that. So the way that I would do it is, first of all, I always introduce myself. I'll always walk over and I'll say, hi, I'm Stephen, I'm the magician, I'm performing a little bit of magic. Uh, today, it'd be great if you could grab some photos and video. I will then have a little chat with the photographer or videographer, just find out a little bit about them, find when they're there till, things like that. Always make sure that I get a note of their name, whether it's their own name or their company name. Another tip is that I will always tag that I'm with them, so when I post I was at a gig on my business page, I'll say I was at a great gig today, I met Stephen's video company. I will always tag them in posts, I'll always add them as a friend, like their business page and interact with their posts. This is a great way to build a relationship with them prior to asking them for the photos. So what I do is I always wait three months from the event. So I will contact the company three months after that and I'll say, it was great meeting you on this date. I remember you took some photos, can I obtain a copy of these for my own records? When I get the photos, I always share them on Facebook, I always share them on my Instagram. I always make sure that I tag the event, I tag the venue, and I tag the person that took the photo or video. And that is probably my favourite way to get photo and video. Okay, so coming in at number two, my second tip would be to bring your own. Alright, so what do I mean by that? So what I mean is bring someone to take photos and video of you. So one thing that I always do is I try and upsell a photographer or videographer at an event. Now normally if it's a wedding they will already have one so I won't do it. But if it's more of a private event, say a birthday party or something like that, I'll then try and upsell them a photographer. The way that I do this is I'll say for an additional, just say £100, you'll be able to get some photos of everyone at the event and it'll be of me performing as well. So what I then do is I have a couple of friends who are into photography and I will pay them a, a little cut of the money that I make from that and they'll take some photos and send them to me. Once I have the photos, I'll then forward them on to the client. Another option for bringing your own is you could pay a professional to come. So what I have done in the past is I have paid people who are professional photographers and videographers to come to an event and video myself and my team working. So I have made a little loss on the gig because sometimes it has cost me a lot so I haven't made much money off the gig. However, the videos and photos will make me more money long term. So it would be a short term investment for a very, very long term gain. One thing that I always do is I include in my contract that I will possibly bring someone along to take photos and video and if I do, it will be used as my social media, it will be used in marketing but also the client will get a copy of this. Thank you.
Okay, so I thought I'd just take a few seconds to give you a little life update, tell you where I've been. So recently I was in Edinburgh performing at a wedding. As you'll see on the screen, there's some lovely photos that were sent over to me from Stephanie, who is the photographer that was on the that was there on the day. I also had a little day where I went a walk around Glasgow. I played with my new camera. You'll see a little clip from that here. I also took some lovely photos because not only am I a magician, I'm really into photo and video, which is what how this YouTube channel came about. If you want to see a little bit more of my photos, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is here. Anyway, let's get back to the top tips. Alright, so coming in at number three, we have give someone your phone. So everybody has one of these on them, a mobile phone, and most cameras on mobile phones are really, really good and will be good quality to capture you performing. So there's a couple of ways that I'll hand out my phone. My first way is, as I'm performing, if there's a big moment coming up, I'll take my phone out, I'll open up the camera, and I'll just hand it to someone and say, can you film that? Normally at this point, someone will just grab it and just shoot the video. Now, you do have a filtering process. What you need to do is you'll need to take some of the footage and not use it because it might be shaky, it might be blurry, it might not be focusing on the reactions. But for every 10 clips you take, you may get four or five that are really usable and they'll make you more money long term. A second option is something that I've done in the past is I've got an old iPhone that I've got so the previous one before I've upgraded it and I've gave that to someone at the event and I've said maybe a kid, I'm like, would you like to act as a photographer? Take the phone, grab some photos, grab some video uh, for the next 10 minutes and then basically I'll go over, I'll take the phone off them and I'll see what kind of stuff they've captured. This is a good way if you've got kids that are following you around and spoiling all the tricks, you go, you know what, let's be work as a team. Here's my phone, do me a favour. Follow me around, take photos, take videos, you know what's going to happen so you know all the good bits, make sure you catch it. Once you've done that, you can then take the videos and photos and you can crop them, edit them, whatever way you like. One thing I do recommend is that every magician gets a copy of Lightroom from Adobe. This is not sponsored by Adobe, by the way, but if you'd like to sponsor me Adobe. So yeah, if you've got Lightroom, you can then edit it. If you've got something like iMovie, you can edit it as well. Um, and yeah, make everything look really, really good. Alright, so coming in at number four, we have get them to give you the video. So if I'm at an event and someone says to me, can I film you performing? I'll say yes, as long as you send it to me. Now most people will use either an iPhone or a Android device. If they're using an iPhone, because I've got an iPhone, I'll get them to airdrop me the video. If they're using Android, I'll say to them, you know what, send me the video just now, send me it on uh, WhatsApp. I'll give them my business card, get them to send me it on WhatsApp. Now one tip that I picked up very recently was to stand there and make sure they do it. So stand there awkwardly and wait for them to send it. Obviously use your discretion, don't just awkwardly just stand and stare at them like this. If someone is filming me at an event or taking photos, I'll say to them, if you put that on social media, make sure you tag me. My Instagram is, my Facebook is, my Twitter is. And then that way it will come back to you, you'll be able to see the footage and you can share it as well. And coming in at number five, we have the last tip, which is check social media. Now this one might come across as a little bit of creepy and weird, but bear with me on it. One of the things I like to do is I like to look myself up on the internet because I have an ego. Now what I mean by that is I'll put in like venues that I'm performing at and I'll go into the most recent photos and see if anyone has maybe on Instagram shared a photo of me performing. I'll also look up other professionals pages, so whether it's uh, the uh, photographer, the videographer, or even the celebrant. I've had a celebrant who I have built a relationship with over the last couple of years share photos of me performing. So I'll go in and I'll look at other professionals who are at that, that event and check and see if there's been any photos of me shared. So this is a great way to find photos uh, it's a good way to build interaction if you like it and say things like great to meet you at the event or um, hope you had a great afternoon, things like that. It'll help build a relationship with uh, potential clients and people that have been at that event. Alright, so I just want to give you three more top tips. The first one is do not, and I mean it, do not under any circumstances edit a professional's photo or video in any way. I would always share the photo or video in the format that they give you it 
So if, if there's something in the photo you don't like, don't use the photo. So for example, if you are hiding something in your hand and it's all over the shoulder view, you can clearly see you've got a coin palmed in your hand, just don't share that photo. These professionals are paid a lot of money to do their job and if you're doing it in a totally different way, maybe changing the lighting or adding a vignette onto the photo, then you're tampering with their work and giving a misrepresentation of how they present their product. With that being said, the other tip that I would give is make sure that when you edit the photos and you have 100% control over that, you do the best that you can. If you do not know how to edit photos, watch tutorials online, and there's lots of Lightroom tutorials, stuff like that. If you do not know how to edit video, there's also lots of tutorials on that. And if you just don't have a clue and don't fancy doing it, get a professional, pay someone to do it. And my biggest tip, the biggest tip is always, always credit the people who have took the photo and took the video. And there we have it, that is five tips, and a little bit more if I'm honest, five tips on how to get more photos and videos. If you are a magician and you have some ways that you do get photos and videos, please comment down below. I'd love to hear how you do it. And if you have enjoyed the video, make sure you give me a wee thumbs up, click the big subscribe button, switch the notification bell on, so every time I post a new video, you do get notified. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.